Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. I welcome you to our covenant service in Jesus' name. I want you to rise up on your feet and begin to pray. And you tell the Lord you are here today. And in this covenant service, you want the Lord to pour out all the riches of glory, all the blessings of heaven upon your soul, upon your family, upon your life this year. That you'll never, never, never be the same again. That this, by the grace of God, in a walking by the Spirit of the Lord, will be a special time, a glorious time, a time of turning around for your life, for your family, and everything around you. Now from this very day, this very month, a special month indeed, you'll never, never be the same again. That the transforming power of the Lord will so touch you and transform you. And you'll taste and see how good and marvelous and wonderful our God is. In Jesus' name we pray. And those who are expecting the blessings of God said, Amen. Almighty God, we thank you. We come with joy. We come with expectation. And we come, Lord, with great faith here today that you're going to pour abundant blessings upon everyone in Jesus' name. We're praying, Lord, as we look at the scriptures. The good things are preserved and prepared for everyone. You reveal to us today in Jesus' name. And it will be ours in Jesus' name. We'll enjoy them. Our children will enjoy them. Our wives will enjoy them. Our husbands will enjoy them. All the members of your church will enjoy them in Jesus' name. Bless us today. And let your blessings spill over to everyone around us. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. We can see that. We're looking at Joshua chapter 6. If you were in church last Sunday, you'll see how the Lord brought us to chapter 5 of Joshua. And we titled that Crossing Over. Onto the promised land this year. This year we're crossing over. We're leaving all our wilderness behind, all our sorrows behind, all our sicknesses behind, all our sufferings behind, and we're going to have the abundance of the Lord this year in Jesus' name. This time now we're looking at entering the promised land by faith. Entering and then enjoying that promised land. I'm going to enter to the promised land. I said I will enter to the promised land. Entering the promised land by what? By faith. In Joshua chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 1. Now Jericho was strictly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See. I have given into thine hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. As you look at those two verses, you will see it appeared there was a barrier. There was a hindrance. It's like the people closed the gate, and they shut the doors. And that was the only gateway into the promised land. 
Jericho stood between them and a land of promise, and the gates were shut, the doors were shut, and the bars were in place so that they will not be able to enter in. As you look at all things around you, it might appear that somebody shut some gates and somebody locked some doors. And they are thinking in their own imagination that you will not be able to pass through that gate and you will not be able to enter in. By the time we finish the chapter, you will see that all those gates are destroyed. Yeah. All those doors are opened. Yeah. And the walls that are high, they are all broken down this very day in Jesus' name. Yeah. Actually, the Lord has spoken to the children of Israel that he was bringing them to the land of promise. If you look at Deuteronomy chapter 27, Deuteronomy chapter 27, I'm reading from verse 1. And Moses, with the elders of the children of Israel, commanded the people, saying, Keep all the commandments which I command you this day, and it shall be on the day when he shall pass over Jordan unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, that thou shalt set thee up great stones and plaster them with plaster. And I shall write upon them all the words of this law, all the words of this law, when thou art passed over, that thou mayest go in unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, a land that floweth with what and what? With milk and honey, as the Lord thy God, the God of thy fathers, promised thee. You'll see, it talked about Jordan. They left Jordan behind already. And he said, any time they crossed Jordan, and they were now to move on, they'll be getting into the land that the Lord had promised them. And now that they came to this other side of Jordan, just one step, and they will be in. And today, just one step. I said, just one step. Yeah. They are coming in in Jesus' name. But before they went in, what were the things we see marking the way? Because we already started from chapter 1. And then chapter 2, and then chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5, before we come to chapter 6. What have we discovered? There's no time to read all the references coming from chapter 1. You discover, write this down, number 1, salvation, salvation. The Lord thy God. He came out of their sins, and he came to know the Lord. And the Lord said, yes, I claim you as my people, as you have vouched me and claim me as your God. Number one, the act of salvation. If you're going to enter in, you are going to enter in. Number one, you must have salvation. Number two, separation. Separation. It was going to separate them. He had done that already. He separated them from the Egyptians. He said, I've taken you. I've called you. I brought you unto myself. And I've taken you out of Egypt. He separated them. Number three, submission. Submission. They were now to submit to his will and to his word. He said, all these words were write down. And your life will be directed. Your life will be controlled by these words that I give unto you. Number one, what's that? Salvation. Number two, what's that? Separation. Number three, what's that? Submission. Number four, sanctification. I'm looking at Joshua chapter 3 verse 5. Joshua chapter 3 verse 5. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. The Lord will do wonders in this place. And all the places we are hearing the word of God. For every man and every woman, every boy and every girl, the Lord will do wonders in our lives in Jesus' name. This is that day. Say, this is my day. And, but the Lord said, sanctify yourselves. There must be sanctification. You see, it were coming from salvation, unto separation, unto submission, unto sanctification. And the Lord said, as we are taking those steps, 
and you're very definite and deliberate about it and you come one and two and three and four you're moving on and you're going to move into the lunch in jesus name after that there is going to be number five satisfaction everybody says satisfaction no dissatisfaction this year no disappointment this year the Lord will satisfy every one of our needs and desires in Jesus' name. Jeremiah chapter 31. Jeremiah 31. I'm reading from verse 14. And I will satiate the soul of the priest with fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my goodness, says the Lord. My people. Are those people around? Or are they? If you are, if you are, if you are one of them, one of us, you are going to be satisfied. And my people shall be satisfied with my goodness, says the Lord. Number six, saturation, saturation. Now the Lord will just saturate our lives. Every part of our lives, every part of our families to experience that saturation of the blessing and the goodness of the Lord this year in Jesus' name. Verse 25, Jeremiah chapter 31, and in verse 25, For I shall satiate the weary soul, and I have replenished every sorrowful soul. All the sorrows are taken away, suffering taken away, and every sin of the devil coming from the wrong direction into our lives, everything is taken away in Jesus' name. And as you believe, you are going to see that abundant saturation and satisfaction in Jesus' name. Number seven is the supply. The supply. We're looking at Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. In Philippians chapter 4, we're looking at verse 19. But my God shall supply all your need. I thought you would say, Amen. I thought it would be a 2009. Amen. Praise yeah. the Lord. This year they supply. Yeah. Everywhere you go, they'll supply you. Yeah. Your well will not run dry. Yeah. Your blessing will not run dry. Yeah. And every part of your need in your life, the Lord will supply His abundance everywhere in Jesus' name. Yeah. But my God shall supply all your need according to, according to, according to what? According to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. As we come to Joshua chapter 6, we're looking at entering into the promised land, entering the promised land by faith. And once we have the faith, we're going to enjoy. We're going to enter. And we're going to be satisfied in Jesus' name. All through this year, keep those words in your mind. The salvation, the separation, the submission, the sanctification, and the satisfaction, the saturation, and finally, the supply. We're going to divide the message to three parts. Number one, the great object of faith the great object of faith that is what you are looking at or who you are looking at what you are listening to and who you are listening to the very object of your faith on which your faith this year hangs and depends and you are planted on that solid rock it's when you have that right and proper object of faith that's when you'll be able to enter number two, the gracious obedience of faith. The gracious obedience of faith. And then number three, the glorious outcome of faith. The glorious outcome of faith. Faith will never fail. Our faith will never be disappointed. Whatever we feel, whatever we see, whatever we hear, whatever we sense, Whatever we smell, whatever we know, whatever we understand, if we will have this faith that we're looking at in Joshua chapter 6, every door will be opened. Every problem will be solved. Every difficulty will be dissolved. And then we'll be able to enter 
it to the abundance the Lord has promised us and will enjoy this year in Jesus' name. Number one, the great object of faith. We're looking at Joshua chapter 6, verse 2. And the Lord said unto Joshua, And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho, the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. I want you to notice in this verse, and number one, you want to notice Joshua. Joshua was one of the twelve, the twelve spies that Moses sent out 40 years before this time. And all those spies, so Joshua, they saw the world cities. They saw the difficulties, they saw the challenges, and they saw the sons of Anakims there. They saw the giants there. And the people came back and they said, this is a difficult task. It's an impossible situation. This is terrible. All those giants are there, and we look like grasshoppers in their sight. And now the Lord said unto Joshua, Joshua, who had seen the giants, Joshua, who had seen the walls of Jericho, and Joshua, who had known the difficulties of the land, and who fell to all the other people, that they were smaller, and they were little, more than all those other people. Now God said, see. When he said see, he doesn't say look at the walls, and he doesn't say look at who you are. He doesn't say look at the things around you. See. Look at this, the Almighty God, look unto me, all ye the ends of the earth, and be ye saved, because I am God, and there is none else. He says, see, I have given into thine hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. That is the mighty men who are in Jericho, that all those people are afraid of, and he felt, how are we able to go in? You will go in. And this is that day, because the Lord said, the Lord said, who is the object of our faith? The Lord himself, the Lord himself, the Lord himself. And this year, that's what you want to look at, that's who you want to look at. Whatever people say, whatever you feel, whatever you sense, you want to concentrate on the object of our faith. The Lord said, now what did he say? Verse 3, and ye shall come past the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shall thou do six days. The Lord was already telling them, I've given you already. All you need to do now is to walk about and walk around in joy, in expectation, in confidence, knowing it is yours already. And when you walk around, you're not going to do anything because the Lord has done everything already. I said he has done it for you already. In verse 4, and the seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. And seven, on the seventh day, he shall compass the city seven times, and the priest shall blow for the trumpet. And it shall come to pass that when they shall make long blasts with the ram's horn, and when ye shall hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall, all the people shall, shall fight. No, the fighting is done already by the captain of the Lord of hosts. Ours now is to shout the shout of joy and the shout of victory. Because victory is ours already. He shall shout with a great shout. And then it says, And the wall of the city shall fall down flat. And the people shall ascend up. Every man, how many people? Every man straight before him. There is no exception to the blessing of God this day. For every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, every member, every invitee, the blessing is coming upon us in Jesus' name. But I want you to notice something there. The very object of faith, as we're marching around, keep on looking at the Lord. And keep on remembering the words of the Lord. Don't think about how you feel. And don't think about what people say unto you. And don't think about any other thing. Just the Lord, the object of 
our faith. I want to show you that that's always important. That's always very significant. Exodus chapter 14. The Lord is the object of our faith. The object of our faith. Exodus chapter 14, verse 31. And Israel saw that the great, the great, the great, the great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians. And the Lord and the people feared the Lord and believed who? Believed the Lord. They believed the Lord. What's the Lord telling you in his promises? And what promises are the Lord giving you? Believe the Lord because he is the object of our faith. It says, and the people believed the Lord.